Okay, let's let's get ready for part two. We'll pick up where we left off. Um, so in the last video, we figured out what the rate law looked like. Rate is equal to K times um, concentration of the thiol sulfate raised to the first power. Right, so we found the orders of the reaction, M and N. Now what we want to do is solve for K. So let's go back and let's just review again what that looks like. So we had rate, rate is equal to K times the uh, S2O3 to minus concentration raised to the first power. So I'm not going to write the one there. Right, that's what our rate law is. And when we did this experiment, we collected a whole bunch of rate and concentration data. Right, so we changed the concentration and then we calculated the rate. You know, measured the time and then then calculated the rate from that. So in the table, you know, that we have in Excel, we have a whole bunch of um, rate and you know rate and concentration data. So we now know what M and N are, right? Uh, so we can just solve for K. We have a whole bunch of Ks we can solve for. We have four different trials um, that we're going to do this for, and then we're going to average that K. So I have rate and I have concentration, and I'm going to solve for K. So again, this is the data that I'm looking at. Um, don't worry about mixture five. We're going to do that when we'll, we'll look at that next. We're going to calculate the average K for these four reactions using this rate and these concentrations. I don't have to worry about the, the H plus because it was it was zeroth order with respect to H plus. It's first order with respect to the thiosulfate sulfate concentration. Um, so this is what the so changing this concentration affects the rate. So if you remember um, when we doubled this concentration here, right when we went from 0.16 to um, I'm sorry, 0.167 to 0.33, and we held this guy constant, the rate stayed exactly the same, which means that that was zero with order with respect to uh, that concentration. So all we're going to do now is fill in this rate data with this concentration data to help us figure out what the, uh, what the K is. So I'll do it out once here, and then I'll use Excel to calculate the rest of them. So I have rate of um, rate 1. Rate 1 is 0.019. That's equal to K times the concentration, which is 0.083. Um, so again, I'm using mixture. Uh, I'm looking at that first mixture here, 0.019 and 0.083. I'm going to do this for all of the Ks, though. So when I work that out, what do I have to do? Just divide both sides by 0.083. All right, and I get my K equals uh, 0 0.23. Okay, so now what I'll do is do the rest of them in Excel. Um, okay, so all, all I had to do was take the uh, rate and divide it by the concentration. So I'm going to have rate divided by concentration. And then over here, I'm going to have this rate divided by this concentration. Here I will have this rate concentration and then you can see they're pretty similar 0 0.222 0 0.234 0 0.222 0 0.234 okay so we have whatever we have and if your numbers are coming out slightly different um, it's because Excel is keeping all of your um, all of the digits and so if you're rounding too soon so if I like wanted to show a couple more digits here if you're doing this by you know by hand you can see it's not um, 0 0.019 is 0 0.0185, whatever. There's extra digits in here. So if these numbers look a little bit slightly different than um, than what you're calculating by hand, that that's okay. It's okay. It should average out to be okay. So to find the average, I'm going to do equals average of these. Uh, if you're doing this by hand, you're just going to add up this, 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 and this. Add up all four numbers and divide by four. You should get the same, about the same average. Um, Again, if you if you have rounding differences, then you'll you'll get a slightly different answer. But that's our average k. Okay, so 0 0.228. That's our average k. So our k average k is 0.228. Great. So let's go back through. You know, how do we do these problems, right? We have a rate law. We have rate. Usually we have rate um, equals k times some concentration. You know, raised to a power times another concentration raised to a power. So that's usually what we do in class, right? So in class, we're given, um, you know, rate and concentration data, right? We have these tables of rate, concentration data. And that's what we did in the lab, right? We had these different concentrations, change the concentration, measure the rate. 
And then what do we do? We compare to, um, to mixtures and we solve for M and N. So the first step is to solve for M and N, right? Solve for M and N, and we did that already. And then what do we do? We take M and N and these concentrations in the rate and we solve for K. So that's what we just did in that last step, solve for K. And then what do we do? Then our next problem is usually given K and new concentrations, and you already know M and N, now solve for the rate. So what we're going to do now is find a predicted rate. We're going to predict what the rate should be based on mixture 5. So mixture 5, we didn't use that K when we were averaging the K. Um, should be, you know, we're going to use the average K now to help us predict the rate. Okay, so this is the rate part. So I have my rate. Here we go. So I have rate, my predicted rate, this is my predicted rate, is going to equal my rate. It's just my rate law, right? Rate is equal to K times that um, S2O3, 2 minus concentration raised to that first power because M is 1. So now I'm trying to find a rate. And I know the average K, 0 0.228, right? Oops. And then I know my concentration for mixture 5. i got to look that up. So go over here, back to Excel, look at mixture 5. And mixture five was what that concentration there? 0 0.033. 0 0.0333. Here. 0 0.0333. All right. And so when I work that out, what do I get? Something about like 0 0.0076. And again, if Excel is keeping more um, guard digits than me might see something slightly different. Let's see. So all I did to find my um, predicted rate, let's move that guy a little. There we go. Predicted rate, I just said rate is equal to uh, K, the average K, times the concentration of the S2O3 2 minus raised to that first power. So I got 0 0.00761. Great. Um, so that's the you know, the, the, the predicted relative rate. What I observed, the rate that I observed here, was this, 0 0.0057. And then I can find the percent error. Now, time, the time. Okay, so let's look at time. If we know that um, rate, how are we calculating rate before? We said rate is equal to one over time. If I wanna solve for time, time is equal to one over rate. That's just math, right? I just multiply both sides by time, divide both sides by rate. There we go, time is equal to one over rate. So if I know this is the rate, um, I can figure out what the predicted time would be. So I just do one over the predicted rate. So that's a 0 0.0076. There we go, 1 divided by 0 0.0076. 131.0076. Thirty-one point six point five something again depends on how many sig figs I have here. Let's see what Excel gives me. I'm just going to take uh, one divided by my rate should give me time because one divided by time gives me rate. Okay, so because I had that extra one there, it changes my my decimal over here. Fine. Um, the observed time that I found uh, was what? That's going to be um, one seven uh, one seventy five, right? That's what I actually measured. So I measured that, I did the experiment, I had 175 seconds, and this is my predicted time. Um, so now I can find the percent error. Percent error is going to be your, um, going to be the predicted, right? That's the theoretical minus the experimental divided by the theoretical times 100. And you can take the absolute value of that if you end up with something negative. Um, that just makes it positive, so I'll just do absolute value of this rate. So I get like 33%. You can do the same thing for um, your relative rate if you want to, right? Same same idea, uh, predicted minus observed divided by predicted times 100 gives you that. So those are your percent errors. Um, now we can look at temperature. So how is, how is the, uh, oops. What happens when I change uh, the temperature? How can I figure out um, how does that affect? That's going to change the rate constant, number one. But then I can use this to help me calculate the activation energy for this particular reaction. 
So I, I did four uh, temperature baths, so for the room temperature, we just kept that room temperature data. Um, so these were the actual temperatures that we measured, 40, 20, 8, 4. So we didn't quite get down to zero on that one. That's okay. We said four temperatures is fine. Um, reaction, so these were the times. So, so one thing you can notice is that, uh, and this is true for most reactions, they happen faster at higher temperatures, right, and slower at, at colder temperatures. So this one kind of takes a while. Um, to find the relative rate, uh, it's just one over time. So I'm going to do equals one divided by time. We've done this a bunch of times now. So I found the rate. I'm just doing one over time. Find the rate. Bring that down. Um, and then to find the rate constant, how did I find that last time? How did I find the rate constant last time? Let's go look at our data. Rate, rate constant. Um, we had rate equals k times, oh, sorry, rate is equal to k times that concentration. I used mixture one. In, in, for the rest of these temperature changes. So rate equals K. I know what this, this concentration is. I just measured the rate so I can figure out the K at each time. And that K is going to change. K is temperature dependent. So I'm just going to do rate divided by the concentration and that should get me K. So I'm going to do rate divided by the concentration in mixture one, which is what? Um, 0.083. Yeah, 0.083. 2833, sure. Right, so I got that. Um, and that's going to be the same for all of them, right? I'm going to take this, this concentration divided by 0.083, and then this concentration divided by 0.083. Great, so I get my new um, relative rate constants. Those are my k's. To find the natural log of k equals natural log of this. So if you're doing this in your calculator, um, find your natural log button, just the natural log of that. Great. Get those numbers. Notice they're negative. That's okay. Just you'll see how that affects our graph. Temperature. Temperature. Uh, to turn, we want to convert that to Kelvin. We're just going to take our Celsius temperature and we're going to add 273 to it. Oh, do you see how quickly we're doing these in Excel? And then just drag all that down. And now for this one, 1 over temperature equals 1 divided by the temperature in Kelvin. There you go. Now, if you're doing these by hand, um, make sure you, you copy down a couple digits. Uh, don't just put 0 0.003, because when you try to graph that, if you're typing that back in. Um, so if you're doing this on your calculator and then you're typing it back into Excel to graph it, um, make sure you, you carry out more than, um, you know, you don't want to graph that. It's not going to give you a very good graph. You're going to want um, some more numbers to put in there. So if you do everything in Excel, it'll, it'll Excel is like storing all these numbers, even if it's not displaying them all. Okay, so what the heck are we doing here? <laughs> We're looking at uh, temperature changes and how that affects your uh, your rate constants, your, your relative rate constant, and then we're going to graph the um, Arrhenius equation. So let's look at both the Arrhenius equations really telling us about and how that's related to anything here. So we have natural log, natural log, ln of k prime is equal to negative ea over um, rt, rt um, plus some kind of constant. Okay, so this is a linear equation, y equals mx plus b, and in this case, you know, the natural log of the relative rate constant, that's our y, right? So that's when we graph this, we want y is over here, x is down here. So y, we want natural log of k prime. And we just calculated that, right? And then over here, this is where it gets kind of weird, right? So this is your, sorry, that is your slope. And you're plotting negative Ea over R. And then we're going to plot 1 over temperature. So 1 over temperature, that's our x. x is 1 over temperature. Um, 1 over temperature in Kelvin. And then our slope is negative Ea over R. So this is slope. That's all. M means slope. So if I want to figure out what the activation energy is, Ea, that's just going to be um, R times slope, and then I'm going to bring that negative over. So negative R times whatever the slope is. And R is just a constant. R is 8.314. That's in joules per mole Kelvin. Or if you want to put in kilojoules, just divide that by 1,000, which is the same as like 10 cents to negative 3. That'll be in kilojoules per mole Kelvin, and then times the slope here. But that's what we're doing. We're basically making this graph. Making that graph, um, we're going to get a, a linear equation. We're going to look at the slope. Um, 
So let's do it. And then once we know the slope, we can calculate the activation energy. All right. So how do we get this graph? So if you're like, ah, I don't know how to graph anything, go to insert. Oh, there's a million ways to do it, but I'm, I'm going to show you this way. Uh, and then scatter, okay, which is blank. And you're like, well, that doesn't help me. So then we right click on there and go to select data. Just click that and then add. And so I'm going to add some entries. So I want on my X, what did I want on my X? On my X, that's the horizontal, I want one over temperature. So I just click in that box and then I drag all those. I want those. For Y, I don't want it to equal one. I want it to equal natural log of K. Great. And then I'm going to say, okay. And that's my graph. Um, now let's label some stuff on here. Let's get our axis titles. This over here, where did we say that was? That's the natural log of K. K prime actually, right? That's our relative rate constant. So we have relative rates. And then down here, what do we have? Um, we have our one divided by our temperature in Kelvin, right? So that's one over Kelvin. Um, and then this, I'm just going to call this, this is our Arrhenius, I'm plotting the Arrhenius, Arrhenius equation. I'm just going to call that an Arrhenius plot. Great. And what we want to do with this guy is find the slope so we can figure out what the activation energy is. So I'm going to left click on a point and then right click, go to add trend line, and this thing pops up, slide down, and display equation on the graph. And this is my equation. Right, so I'm looking for my slope, and I'm going to copy the slope down over here, negative 5662, and then I want to find the activation energy in joules per mole and then in uh, kilojoules per mole. So Excel could calculate the slope for you. I'm just going to read it off the graph, but there is a way to do it. It's pretty easy. But All right, so I want to do slope times the negative r, negative 8.3145, great. Is that, and then if I take that and divide it by a thousand, it's going to give it to me in kilojoules per mole. So that is my activation energy. That's what we found.